I'm Tracy Baxter with today's Record News Watch. The defense is wrapping up its case in the Sullivan County Court trial of Paul Novak, the town of Tustin man accused of first-degree murder for the killing of his estranged wife, Catherine, and for so setting fire to their home to cover up the crime and collect insurance money. Defense witness Ilona Novak, uh, Paul Novak's sister, testified that her brother's ex-lover, Michelle LaFrance, may have had something to do with Catherine's murder. LaFrance had testified earlier in the trial, admitting to having some knowledge of Paul Novak's plan and providing him with an alibi. The jury is expected to get the case next week. Should surveillance cameras be installed at some City of Newburgh intersections? Orange County Legislator Pat Berardinelli thinks so, and he wants the state to change traffic laws in the city so surveillance cameras can be placed at critical intersections to catch dangerous drivers in the act. Berardinelli says the problem of drivers disregarding stop signs is putting children in the city at risk. He and other Newburgh city officials will be holding a news conference next week to discuss their request at a place that Berardinelli has labeled a troubled spot, the intersection of DuPont Avenue and Anderson Street. Port Jervis police say additional charges could be lodged against an Orange County doctor accused of giving away pills without a prescription from his office on Pike Street in Port Jervis. Dr. Moinuddin Ahmed was arrested following an investigation that involved the Federal Drug Enforcement Agency. The 57-year-old Goshen resident currently facing felony charges of sale and possession of controlled substances. Meantime, Kingston police have arrested a city resident for trying to pass forge prescriptions. 45-year-old Nancy Gerard was charged with two counts, a felony criminal possession of a forged instrument after an employee at the CVS pharmacy on Washington Street called police to tell them Gerard was presenting phony prescriptions. Middletown Mayor Joe Stefano says it could help convince more people to run for office. It's the proposed local law that will mo almost double the mayor's salary from its current $39,000 a year to $75,000. Mayoral pay was last raised in 2001 in Middletown from $16,000 to $39,000. DeStefano, along with the council president and aldermen in two of the city's wards, are running unopposed this fall. DeStefano says it shows democracies hurting in Middletown. If the Common Council approves the local law, it would take effect in January after the new terms begin. In Greene County, a state police patrol car was involved in a fatal accident last night. Happened in the community of Tannersville when a man on a skateboard collided with a police patrol vehicle. According to state police, 50-year-old Bernard Hamilton was riding the skateboard down Hill Road when he went onto Route 23A, hitting the marked patrol unit. Hamilton was pronounced dead at the scene. The investigation of the incident is continuing. What to do with pieces of the existing Tappan Zee Bridge when it's torn down in 2017 and replaced by a new bridge? Well, the State Thruway Authority has come up with a list of materials from the current bridge that will be salvaged and uh, reused for future thruway projects. The list includes concrete deck panel units, steel barriers, and fiber optic cables from the bridge. Thruway maintenance officials say anything that can be salvaged and used by others will be salvaged. And 147 people officially became new U.S. citizens earlier today in Newburgh during a naturalization ceremony held under the direction of the Orange County Clerk's Office. The office hosts six naturalization ceremonies each year. This one held at the Newburgh Armory, which uh, could accommodate more people than the traditional courtroom setting. Among the newest American citizens, Jeffrey Robb of Middletown, a native of Jamaica, who sought citizenship at the urging of his wife. Was it worth, you know, the effort to go through it? It was, it was. My wife is also a citizen, and she, she urged me to also be a citizen. It's, it, I'm elated. It's a great experience. It's a great experience. It was, it, was, it was worth going through the interviews and everything else that it took to become a citizen. Not only that it 
is heartwarming. It's also another step for these folks that have been participating in the community to now be actual citizens and they feel um, ownership of the community, of the county, of the United States, which is where they ultimately wanted to be citizens of. Last year, 422 new American citizens were sworn in after they had completed the necessary regulations. This was the first naturalization ceremony to be held at the Newburgh Armory Unity Center. Officials are looking for federal approval that uh, would allow the armory to become a satellite immigration office, thereby sparing area immigra immigrants uh, from having to spend time and money traveling to New York City to apply for citizenship. After a week of nice early fall weather, we'll see some rain this weekend. Saturday will be mostly cloudy with showers developing by late in the day Saturday and evening. The highs will be in the lower 70s. Sunday will be mostly cloudy in the morning with lingering showers likely and clearing by afternoon. Temperatures will again reach the low 70s. Get the news you need and the features you enjoy in the weekend editions of the Times Herald Record and stay connected to breaking news all weekend long right here at Record Online. For Record News Watch, I'm Tracy Baxter.